Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be reviewing the X53F FPV quadcopter. This is a review model from GearBest.com and I'll have the links in the description of where you can pick this up. What we're going to be doing is showing you what we get out of the box and um, kind of setting it up, going through all the features, taking it out to the park, doing some flights, coming back to the house, doing some house flights, getting some video, onboard video, onboard pictures, uh, going through all these paces, getting some hat cam video of it flying, and then coming on back and coming back to the bench and doing a final pros and cons afterthoughts. So first off, this is a 5.8 gigahertz um, FPV quadcopter. And basically out of the box, this is exactly how it came out of the box. It was all plugged in, the camera was mounted, the battery was inside of it here. And it also actually had um, these four prop guards mounted which I took off. You should probably keep these on if you're starting out. Just basically there's a, they just kind of pop in and then there's one screw per prop guard to unscrew. But basically aside from the quad and this is the controller that comes in the box. Nice looking FPV controller, which has a few buttons, not too many buttons to confuse you. And it also has a built-in um, FPV LCD screen. So basically the controller, the quad, you get the four prop guards, and then you get this little bag of goodies here. Um, you basically just have your USB plug-in for your battery. It's just your charger here. You'd plug this into any uh, cell phone charger or a computer and plug your battery into the other end. And then they give you a USB thumb drive for your computer, which you can insert your um, micro SD card into as well. I'll go ahead and take these out of the bag real quick. So there's the charger. There's a thumb drive. And then since they already have the um, camera and the uh, battery mounted up inside, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the, the the bottom here real fast. So just off the bat, a um, little bit of a negative. You have to have a screwdriver to unscrew the battery every time you want to change the battery, which is kind of a little bit of a negative in my book. Um, because you could always lose this screw by accident and then you're kind of out of luck with this thing kind of dangling. But it just basically detaches the battery door and then you can access the battery. Um, there is a switch on the bottom here. You can see this on off switch so that's kind of cool where you can plug in your battery and then you can turn this on when you're ready to fly. And so what they give you is a 3.7 volt 650 mAh LiPo battery with the JST type plug. And then this is the way your camera is set up here. The camera is already mounted on the craft and it has this little uh, 5.8 gigahertz antenna which you can either dangle like this or it also has this little clip here on the side of the camera where you can actually just clip it in for a little bit more of a um, tight little mount fit here. But if you were having maybe some signal trouble you can always dangle this straight down and you'd probably get a little bit better signal and farther range. But we're going to test all that in the park and stuff just to see how it performs. And then the camera just plugs into the side here. There's only one way it can plug in and that will um, enable you to power up the camera and have all of its features. So basically to get the battery in you just have to pop it straight down into there and then you've got to kind of Probably first the best way to do it is to feed it up through one of these holes. So you just kind of hook it through one of these holes. I really don't know why they didn't do like a better battery mounting process. This just seems way too tedious to me, but it's just one of those things. And then the way this mounts on is it just kind of slides into the front and then the back sets in and screw it right back in little bit snug. So there you go. So your camera's remounted and then there's no extra legs. It looks like the legs are just these legs right here which the whole quad rests on. And then in the box with mine I didn't have a screwdriver so I had a few of these little screwdrivers hanging around. So a little bit of a negative there. I didn't have a screwdriver in the box. Looks like they may have forgot to put one in unless I lost it or something but I'm pretty good at keeping track of things. Also in the box you get the instruction manual of course and this basically you get this little separate pamphlet which goes through all of the um, FPV functions here. Then you get the main manual which goes through all your basic stuff just what the controls do. Um, it looks like they have a different controller in here maybe for the non-FPV model 
And then of course they just insert this for the FPV model, which we have here. Anyway, getting to the controller, basically um, it's got a bunch of features on here. This would be your throttle and your yaw. And of course you've got your pitch and your roll here on the right stick. You've got your power. And then all of these are basically your trims for all the sticks. So your roll trim, pitch trim, throttle trim, and your yaw trim. And then on the left side here, this would start and stop your video. And then a long press on this will get you into the menu of the screen, which, which we'll go over in just a second. And then uh, this button over here on the right side, right top, is your headless mode. We'll be testing all these modes uh, in the field as well in our flights. And then this right side button here, uh, this just takes basically a uh, snapshot photo. So you press it once, it takes a snapshot photo. If you long press it, it says it's supposed to do a match code for screen. So maybe if you uh, lose connection to your FPV or something and you have to reset it, you just press and hold this one in. Basically, that's all the buttons. Pretty simple for the controller. Uh, the back does take four AA batteries. So they're the slide-in type, four AA's, and the door... The door seems like it'll clip in pretty good and hold itself in so you won't have to worry about that falling out. And just kind of inspecting the quad a little bit into more detail, it looks like it does have um, kind of a very hard shiny plastic shell, which seems like it's a little bit flexible, so it should be okay unless you're crashing really hard. And then the camera itself has a little bit of a tilt, so before you launch, there's no in-flight tilting. So before you launch, you're gonna want to um, tilt this this is how far down it can tilt, and then uh, you can tilt it straight forward as well. And so real quick, let's just do a real quick power up before we take this out for some flights and show you how the screen looks and stuff. So you turn it on with that switch after you have the battery plugged in, and you're going to get this little blinking headlight. Turn on the controller. You're going to get a couple of beeps. And the controller screen starting up. And then to bind the controller to the craft, you just go up and down one time and you'll see the headlight will stay on solid. Now I'm not seeing any other lights aside from the lights inside of the camera on this so not sure really how that's gonna look in the night flight. I guess we'll do another video with some night flying or maybe I'll do some evening flight in the house but um, a little bit of a con there how there's no there's no lights on the arms it looks like the only way you can tell your orientation is this headlight which should be fine but I would have liked to see maybe a few more lights on the arms somewhere. But anyway, getting to the controller. Um, so here's the uh, uh, FPV screen, the LCD screen here. And you can see on the screen we've got the signal from the craft to the controller here. And it's telling us we have an SD card in, which let me just touch base on real quick. This actually came separate in the package. And it's just a 2 gigabyte SD card, which goes into this slot with the writing facing up. And then you're gonna need some kind of pen actually or something to push it in unless you have long fingernails. So you push in and click the SD card like that. And then this is gonna show you the power on the controller itself, the battery power in the controller. And then what's interesting to me is this thing may have some kind of a little telemetry link. And it's saying, uh, it's giving us the power on the actual craft. So that's very interesting to me. Usually in little toy quads like this, you don't see craft power so I'm not sure if that's actually accurate uh, it does have a fully charged battery so it looks like it is but we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that when we do our flying and some other tests and then um, getting into the uh, menu here basically you just click and hold this bottom button and you can just press to cycle through the um, to view your files your your snapshots or your videos straight on the device there is no speaker on here, so you're just going to be able to watch it without without sound if you wanted to. And then you just click again to cycle through. You can adjust the brightness, which is a very good feature. So click this right button to enter, and then the brightness would be to the right to make it brighter and to the left to make it dimmer. So that's a really good function to make it brighter. If you're in the sun, um, you can make it brighter. What I am seeing here is there's a couple of little notches in the screen, and um, it doesn't come with any kind of hood, but it sure would have been nice if there was some kind of optional hood you could put on here that it came with. Just a little piece of plastic. But anyway, uh, so that's those features of the menu here. You got your viewing your files and your brightness. 
and you click and hold again to exit. And then the right, the right side here is basically, uh, I'm just snapping pictures right now, but if you wanted to click and hold, like I spoke of before, it's some kind of pairing, so if you lose connection, you would click and hold this. So my first thoughts on this screen is I really like this screen because it's got a, a nice brightness to it. It doesn't look like it's being it's dim at all when I when you look at it from straight on. This one looks pretty good overall and also allows you to do that brightness adjustment. And it does have like a matte finish on the screen. Um, a lot of the other screens in these little copters have a glossy finish which really is not good for sun reflection. And um, so I'm really liking this type of screen here they're, they're using. But anyway, let's take this out to the field, get some flights, get some flights at the park, some hat cam video, and I'll be doing all the on onboard cam video and snapshots, doing some house flight video, and then coming on back to the bench and doing kind of a final pros and cons, afterthoughts, and seeing how this thing did. All right, so we're here at the park with the X53F. And I'm going to do a little test flight see how the video does, see how it flies in the park, and start the recording. There we go. Binding. And I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, rate 3 right away. All right, pretty good. Seems like rate three at full pitch. As long as it's not going with the wind, it can actually keep its altitude pretty good.
my test here. No wind right now. And it hovers really nicely. It's definitely comparable to a SEMA hover. X5C hover. Flies nice and smooth. like I'm seeing some blinking on the front headlight so that means our battery is going out and you can see the yaw speed the yaw speed on rate 3 still isn't very very fast yeah so it does vary between the two yaw rate three yaw, three uh, rates the yaw rates very but um, seems like it could be a little faster on the third rate of flight all right so there's our battery so we're gonna go ahead and stop the recording by pressing the left bottom button here and there we go so let's uh, go ahead and get some house flight, see how this does in the house, and test out some more of the modes, and then go back to the bench and do a final pros and cons. Okay, so we're gonna do a little in-house no wind night flight, and see how this guy does. All right, looks like everything's booted up. One click on this button here, should start the video and I'm gonna go ahead and take a snapshot while we're at it ah, it looks like it just stopped the video when I press this right button so I guess you can't take pictures while you're taking a video it stops the video so I'm gonna start recording again okay so this is rate one Green is really easy to see. Okay, so we're also going to go ahead and do a lift test. From a hover to full throttle. Wow, that's pretty good. That's actually really good for having an FPV setup and camera on it. Crash testing. Okay, so while we're at it, just gonna go ahead and do a quick little TX uh, test and see what happens. So shutting off the TX now. So a couple of seconds and it just drops. So that's good to know. And then this thing also has a flip function. And uh, the way you do that is you just push in the right thumbstick. And then when you hear the beeping, go ahead and hit any direction on the right stick. And there's your flip. So it does give a slight boost of throttle when you do your flip, but it seems like you're going to have to um, push the throttle up pretty hard just to maintain altitude.
Yep. Flying. I was trying to fly FPV without looking at the craft up the stairs. Just kind of want to do a hands-free hover test and it's not bad it's wandering a little bit there's no wind and it does drop after a little while but not much okay so our yaw rate very slow in rate one Now I'm going to be switching between uh, rate 1, 2, and 3 while I'm rotating by pushing in the left stick, that's rate 2, and that's rate 3. So it gradually gets faster, that's the fastest there. As you can see, there are no other lights besides the front headlights and the internal light controller lights. Okay, so since we launched from this direction, let's do a headless, which is this top right button here. So it should be in headless mode now. The front light is blinking. Yes, that indicates we're in headless. So we're gonna yaw and go forward back. Oh, so it already slightly lost its orientation. So as we can see the battery, it looks like it's communicating somehow to the craft and it knows what the battery power is on the craft. So that's that's pretty darn cool for this level of quad here. For a non-smart quad of this uh, this grade. Okay, recording again. Let's go ahead and try the headless and return to home again. Okay, so going into headless. I'm going to slowly rotate away from me. Come back. Away. Come back. Right. Left. Right. Now I'm at the full yaw on the right one speed okay it is keeping its orientation now let's see how the return to home works so say I'm facing kind of sideways in uh, headless mode and I want to return to home I'm going to press this top left button yep so I went ahead and came back and let's see what happens when we uh, get out of headless. So we're in normal flight mode. And let's see what happens when we uh, press return to home and we're sideways. 
Yep. Whoops. So it does know what to do. It does know which direction to go. All right, well, it looks like that's our battery. And it did a low voltage cutoff. And we can see how our battery on the screen is completely depleted. I'm going to stop the recording. It did actually keep its, uh, its bearing, the second test I did. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, take this thing back to the bench and do a final pros and cons and see how it did. Hey guys, welcome back. So we had some time with the X53F. Uh, we've got some in-house flight, park flight, and we're just going to kind of do some pros and cons now and some final thoughts on this thing and how it did. First of all, the lift on this was really good. You hit the throttle and it had great lift, uh, real powerful lift, even with the uh, camera mounted. This thing had three rates of flight, uh, one, two, and three, low, medium, high. Uh, what I would have liked to see was the third rate, the highest rate, needs a little faster yaw. The yaw was still a little too slow for how fast it could pitch and roll to really fly super aggressively. It still did really well, but I would have liked to see it turn a little faster um, with that third rate. As far as the FPV uh, experience went, great screen. It had this matte finish, so it, reflections were at a minimal. Nice and bright. You could adjust a lot of the controls on the screen, the brightness, all that kind of stuff, which a lot of other quads don't have. So really impressed by the uh, screen they used in here. Worked really well. Even with no sunshade, uh, if there was maybe one con on the controller, I would have liked to see some kind of sunshade that came with it. Just if the sun was really uh, bright that day. It does have a little couple little slots on the controller, so I'm thinking maybe they do have a sunshade you can get aftermarket. But I wish they would have maybe put something in the box. Uh, it does have the brightness control, so you can brighten it up if the sun is on it and see it pretty good, a lot better than other quads. But still would have liked to see that sunshade in the box. As far as the way this thing flew, uh, honestly, it was kind of SEMA smooth. SEMA X5, X5C smooth. You probably heard me mention that a couple times. And it really does fly nice and smooth. Great control. Did have a park flight, and the wind wasn't too high, but it did seem to uh, handle maybe, you know, around 5 mile per hour winds with no problems. Did have that low voltage cutoff, so when you did drain the battery all the way and uh, kept the throttle on the motors, it would eventually cut off the motors to save your battery. I did a TX off test in the house, and it did basically just the quad went ahead and dropped after I turned the TX off, so that's good to know as well. Kind of a con on this, it only had one light, so you had your, uh, it's kind of a white headlight, and this thing really was the only light on the whole thing, actually, aside from the internal uh, flight controller lights, which you can't barely see at all. So this thing, uh, as far as orientation goes, if you're kind of far away, it's going to be kind of hard to tell your orientation because it has all white props. Maybe would have liked to see um, maybe uh, two of them, the front or the back, maybe black or red or something, and that might have helped with orientation. Of course, when it's away from you, um, you're not going to really see anything at night if it's far away from you. And then if it's towards you, you're going to see this white light. So would have liked to see some lights on the corners at least for some kind of night flying. And finally, the major um, con for me, aside from the lights, was the door. The uh, battery door in this, it has a screw holder here. And once you undo the screw, the whole door kind of pops off. And... Um, just real difficult to get the battery in and out quickly. Um, it's like you gotta buy if you're gonna if you're going to take this to the park, you're basically gonna have to have this little screwdriver with you, and uh, if you have a couple of extra batteries, you're gonna have to unscrew this each time. There is no secure kind of hold in for the bat the screw, so the screw might fall out, and you might lose the screw. And then you have no way of securing your battery in at the park. It just kind of, this whole thing just flops out. And then, of course, uh, getting the battery in and out is a little bit of a task because you've got to kind of weave the wires through these holes. Didn't really like that setup. Um, I suppose you could do something like make your own little clip here or maybe just put a piece of tape, a really durable piece of tape here. Um, 
so you can switch in and out the battery quickly but the tape will eventually run out of stickiness and this thing will just be flopping around so really wish they would have uh, designed that a little bit better as far as uh, the way the battery kind of went in and out maybe just like an open wide slot here just to slide the battery down inside um, it does look like this might be moddable to take a much larger battery because there's all this empty space in here so I think what I might do on this one is probably cut a slot here get a larger battery that will slide all the way down maybe a long long type of battery and you could probably fit a pretty darn large battery in here uh, depending on if it will really lift it or not I'm not sure I'll have to test that so stay tuned for possible mod on on that one for this guy and then getting to the range and the flight times uh, basically uh, this guy I was getting 100 to 150 feet of range until it got kind of choppy was um, cutting in and out of range on the um, the control range and then at that range also the FPV gets a little choppy the picture still very clear but uh, it just doesn't have the frame rate it just um, it's not as fluid as it as as it is at close range basically as far as the flight times go on this guy um, five minutes and ten seconds with the FPV camera mounted it on and then until it uh, that's until it goes into low voltage um, flashing and the front headlight will flash and then you have another 30 20 to 30 seconds probably about 20 seconds until it lands kind of that forced low voltage landing it did have good low voltage cutoff so you won't damage your battery and then with no camera you get about another 20 seconds only of flight time as far as my experience went so 530 without the camera and then another 20 seconds until it goes into force landing after the low voltage light starts blinking so aside from a couple of those short those shortcomings um, I think it is a really good flyer it is SEMA X5C stable very easy to fly very fun to fly this is a great controller and screen for all the modes did get some slight skewing uh, when you spin a lot for the bearing for like return to home and headless and that's that's just what happens with these most of these little quads is they just don't have a very good um, remembrance of their bearing when you start spinning around a lot maybe maybe these companies can improve on that a little more but anyway guys uh, Hope you liked the review. Again, this is a review model from GearBest.com. I'll have the links in the description of where you can pick this up. And check out my channel for more reviews on quads like this, action cams, hex copters, all that kind of stuff. I think you'll enjoy it. But anyway, uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.